some ideas um, come to us in the shape of an actual apple falling on our heads. And um, sometimes other ideas are born simply by taking a step back and looking at the orchard. Um, design surrounds us in every way. And as, if we, as we've seen today, it is something that can transform our lives, our worlds, and um, shape our everyday living. And um, innovation is something that surrounds us um, all the time. And whether an idea is brand new, old, or reinvented, it always has one common denominator, and that's thinking outside the box. Uh, design in general is expected or many times has an actual product as an outcome. But today I would like to talk about a different outcome of design, something that has existed for over a hundred years and uh, is now being looked at in a different way from a different perspective in hopes of reinventing it so that it can uh, possibly serve a greater good. Uh, I am talking about looking at the orchard, or in this particular case, looking at a sport. Uh, but before I get to it, I'd like to first talk about something quite disheartening first. Whenever there's a need um, and a problem, there's always two questions that arise. The first is, if we don't help, then who will? And the second is, how do we do it? How do we actually help? The problem I'm referring to in this case is Alzheimer's, a terrifying form of dementia. Dementia is a dreaded word. It's a frightening possibility. And what's even more frightening is the fact that Alzheimer's is actually the most common form of dementia. And um, currently, over 5 million Americans are suffering from this disease. And this number is expected to grow up to 16 million by 2050, which makes this nothing short of an oncoming epidemic. Um, by 2050, it is also anticipated that the caretaking costs of, uh, for someone suffering from Alzheimer's is expected to reach the staggering amount of $20 trillion. Needless to say, there is a problem. So what can we do about this problem? Well, there are, unfortunately, as of today, there is no known cure for Alzheimer's. There are, however, ways in which we can manage these diseases. One of these ways is by regular exercise, which has proven to stimulate brain function, uh, improve cognition, and a lot of times it acts as a tool to fight depression, which is a constant companion for most of these diseases. And, um, and then encouraging, actually, an interesting um, study in the archives of neurology suggests that for some people, a daily walk or a jog could actually alter the risk of developing Alzheimer's or change the course of the disease if it begins. This is certainly very exciting. There are many such studies that suggest that physical activity could help combat the disease of Alzheimer's or dementia, and um, this is done by possibly increasing the, the size of the blood vessels and the amount of neurons in the brain. There are other equally exciting ways with which we can um, try and fight these diseases, such as various brain exercises, games, puzzles, video games, um, all these different brain-boosting <coughs> exercises and tools that all promise to keep us mentally fit. Once again, very exciting. Um, however, what's in the orchard? What if we could combine the exercise of the body with that of the brain? What would such an activity look like? What, we, what if we could just take those two things together and turn it into this really pleasurable and fun pastime? What would we call that? Well, uh, the thing I'm referring to is something that, as I've mentioned, has existed over a century. It is something that most of us are not only familiar with, but have had some experience with. It's something that 
is extremely popular around the world and has once transcended national politics by bringing China and America together in a time of need. What I'm referring to, as most of you probably already guessed, is a sport or a game known as ping pong or otherwise <laughs> known as table tennis. So, what's so special about the sport? Aside from some really interesting statistics, such as that some world-class players could actually put up to 9,000 RPM of spin on a ping pong ball, which is actually faster than a McLaren F1, uh, table tennis has proven to be a very, very good brain activity. It is um, highly aerobic. Uh, Dr. Oz even had a segment on his show once talking about the benefits of Alzheimer's and how it could potentially help cure it. But unfortunately, there is no evidence of that just yet. However, the stimulating the brain in this way has definitely shown some positive results. Dr. Daniel Amen, in his book entitled Making a Good Brain Great, talks about how table tennis stimulates the brain in ways that no other sport does. He calls it, in his own words, the best brain sport ever. And the reason for this, as he points out, is that a number of things are happening when you play ping pong or table tennis. Uh, first of all, it's very good for hand-eye coordination and your reflexes. What, uh, another thing that it does, it activates multiple portions of your brain at the same time because you're trying to do all these different things at once. You're trying to watch the opponent figure out the spin on the ball, trying to figure out where the ball will land while remaining in balance. You're also trying to figure out tactics and shots and all the while remaining calm in order not to miss such a single shot. And this is a lot uh, for a tiny little ball that you're trying to, you know, <laughs> hit. But um, another very interesting study actually was done in 1997 in Japan. This study uh, was done using table tennis as a rehabilitation tool and it involved um, stroke victims as well as dementia patients. This study uncovered some really interesting, um, some significant findings. Um, it showed that table tennis as a rehabilitation is actually uh, very successful in um, in producing uh, increased and effective cardiovascular blood flow among the elderly, that it also uh, produces uh, blood flow in the cerebellum and the brainstem. It's uh, very good as a rehabilitation tool in general, and it has shown to have some really positive benefits as far as uh, as far as uh, dementia is concerned. And another very interesting and very positive result of the study was that patients who participated in this were shown to have decreased uh, depression, which is, once again, something that is a constant companion to these diseases. So given all of that and, you know, taking all that into mind, you can't help but feel like there's a glimmer of light in the dark. and. So why not, you know, take table tennis and use it as a therapy for dementia? This would, of course, require us, in a sense, looking at the orchard. You would have to take a step back and look at this thing that has existed for so long in a whole new way, in a way that might have not been done before. And, um, and so a table tennis therapy program, an essay of table tennis therapy program, was in fact created. And it was designed to help patients suffering from Alzheimer's and other dementias. Um, and um, it not only helps the patients, but it also is, has proven to have very positive uh, impact on their caregivers and family members, which is equally important. So something like this that has existed for such a long time that is now being reinvented in this interesting way in a new way, um, especially when you're involving, uh, the patients are playing with a world-class professional players who you know, are able to keep the ball in the time for prolonged periods of time. And uh, this actively engages the participant, which is where the positive results of this lie. Here are some slides 
uh, some patients playing ping pong. And uh, another very good thing about this therapy program yeah, is the fact that it could be non-strenuous if needed, but at the same time, it is something that doesn't lose its benefits. So we have participants, we've seen somebody 105 years old who is able to participate in the sport and they're in a wheelchair and they're able to hit the ball better than I can. Not that I can play ping pong very well, but still I think that's pretty impressive. So table tennis in this way, redesigning it in this way where you have a professional player on one end of the table and a patient on another, uh, end of the table creates or could possibly create a way to reach out to people who could actually benefit from this. Even though sometimes all you're observing is this little white or orange ball going back and forth, there's so much more going on behind the veil. It um, always makes me think of an um, ant farm or an ant colony where, you know, you just, from the outside, all you see is this little hill but there's just so much more going on internally. And um, another thing that I wanted to point out is that something like this is uh, so simple that it can actually uh, be created as a program that can spread. It can spread, you know, within the United States. It can spread throughout the world. It is something, it is an idea that if ignited could actually, you know, catch on fire and, um, it is definitely, definitely worth trying. So redesigning table tennis in this way is actually something that has sort of proven to not only alter the lives of those suffering from these diseases, but also instill hope in us that maybe a change is possible. Alzheimer's uh, and dementia are very frightening diseases, and if any one of us thinks that uh, we're immune to it, then we would be sadly mistaken. Uh, it is definitely a disease that if it doesn't affect us directly, it will affect us through somebody we hold dear. I think every one of us in this room has had some experience with this. And um, so, you know, it might not have been a very new or obvious idea, such as, you know, Newton's Apple, but it is definitely something that is worth taking a closer look at. It is definitely something that has been looked at in, uh, in a different way and could now possibly serve uh, millions of people in a way that has never been able to be done before. And why not? Um, Alzheimer's, once again, isn't something that can be avoided. It isn't something that we have a cure for, but it is something that we can possibly deal with in a simpler way. An activity like this could not only show the positive benefits of this, like for instance, I once received a phone call from this woman whose uh, husband was in the program uh, who had Alzheimer's uh, in tears. She was in tears just telling me about just how much his daily activities and his participation in his daily activities have improved and how this actually carried on into the night because uh, instead of sleeping for two hours only, he was not able to sleep up to eight. That's another surprising um, thing that we've come across and even though this hasn't been studied, even though there hasn't been, uh, this hasn't been looked at um, as closely as one would hope, uh, it definitely holds a lot of potential and uh, perhaps through um, a united force or through a desire to help, we can you know, ha help spread this um, idea. Thank you.